Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're gonna do this. We're gonna create a carousel in Cinema 4D. Okay, you'll probably find yourself creating one of these product carousels at some point in your motion graphics career. I've made quite a few in my time. So today I'm gonna to show you a few tips and tricks I've picked up along the way. So as you can see, I've just laid out a couple of products here. All of these models are from the content browser, which comes with Cinema 4D, but you can use whatever models you want. The first thing we want to do is zero everything out so it's at the center of the scene. You can do that by putting a zero into all of these boxes. Or let's quickly undo that. You can save a bit of time by coming up to Character, Commands, and select Reset PSR, and that will automatically add zeros into all of those columns. You might want to set a shortcut key to that because it's something you'll probably use pretty often. Okay, let's deselect everything, go to MoGraph and select a cloner object. Now we can put all our objects into our cloner and the first thing you'll notice is that we only have three objects now and they're cloning on the Y axis. So to fix that, we'll jump back into our cloner and we'll change the mode to radial. And that's looking more like it. You'll see that we have all our objects back. There's a five in the count here. We just want to change the plane to XZ and we'll bring the radius up to 345 so they're spaced out a bit more. And that's pretty much the basic setup for this. You could animate this by keyframing the offset and you've got yourself a pretty decent carousel right there. But we can't end the tutorial there. Let's take this up to the next level. Let's get a camera in there and position this stuff up nicely. You can see as we spin this around that everything's facing inward. What if you wanted everything looking towards the camera? Well, you could try grabbing one of the objects and coming up to tags and adding a target tag. If you add the camera into the target object and we go back and play with the offset, you'll see that it's not working. What we need to do in this case is get rid of that and we'll bring in a MoGraph target effector. Then in the effector tab where it says target mode, we can change that to look at camera. You can see everything's automatically spun around to look at the camera. And if we play with the offset again, you can see that's working nicely. If some of your objects are facing the wrong way, like our mobile phone here, that's pretty easy to fix. If we grab it and try to rotate it, you'll notice nothing happens. But if we click on the enable axis tool and try that again, we should be able to rotate it and do whatever we want with it. Let's quickly do that to our kettle, camera and blender. And if we animate that offset again, you can see that's working pretty well. The best thing about this setup is that it's very easy to customize. If you want to change the order, all you have to do is click and drag and reposition them underneath the cloner. And as you can see there, they just swap with each other depending on the order of the list going from top to bottom. You can also easily have as many objects as you like. Let's duplicate all of these so we now have 10 objects, although at the moment we can only see 5. But we can fix that easily by turning the count up to 10. And you can see them all in there duplicated. Okay, now I'll show you a quick trick for animating this. We'll take that offset back to zero and set a keyframe at frame zero. Then we'll move forward to the 10th frame and we'll adjust our offset till the camera is pointing at us and set another keyframe. So we have a pretty boring animation so far, but we can fix that. Let's click on our cloner object and we'll come up here and add a delay effector. Straight away, if we come back down here and hit play again, you can see we've got some nice easing as the carousel turns now. Whereas before the animation was a little bit linear. And if we want a more springy effect, we just come up here and change this to spring and check that out. Now it's nice and bouncy. These kind of effects will just make your carousel a little bit more interesting. One other thing that's pretty popular with carousels these days is scaling the center object as it spins around to give it a bit more prominence. I'll show you what I mean. Let's get rid of all this stuff and just have our base animation. We only have five objects now, so let's bring the count back to five. So we're just left with this. Now this time we're gonna click our cloner and under the MoGraph menu, we'll add a plane effector. We don't want position, so we'll turn that off and we'll turn scale on. We want a tick uniform scale and let's bring this up to 0.45. That should do it, but we only want this to affect the front object. So we'll grab our plane effector and change the fall off to box. So now we can just scale and position this box over our front object and our plane effector will only affect the area within the box. So you get something like this. 
as each object reaches the center, it scales up as well and then scales out. So that's just about it for this tutorial. If you combine all of these techniques together, you'll get something like this. As always, if you want to download the project file, there's a link below to save you a bit of time. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to see in the comment section below, or you can leave a like or dislike. And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. Catch you next time.